COPD or chronic obstructive pulmonary disease is the third leading cause of death worldwide and the seventh leading cause of poor health worldwide. Classification of the disease stage is crucial in effectively managing these patients. And the medical community currently relies on the gold system. But is the gold system really the gold standard? Or can we do better and come up with a superior classification system? This is Euphoria News broadcasting from London. Hello and welcome to Euphoria News, I'm Dr David Bull. The GOLD classification for COPD stands for Global Initiative for Chronic Obstructive Lung Disease, which is the organisation that issues international guidelines for COPD care. Now this is used by physicians all over the world when deciding how best to treat and manage their patients with COPD. The GOLD system assesses COPD using the combined assessment tool, which considers spirometry result to confirm the initial COPD diagnosis and measure the severity of airflow obstruction. It then looks at the patient's symptoms and the impact they have on the patient's life. And finally, it looks at the risk the patient will face in terms of exacerbations. And from this data, COPD is then classified with a number from grade one to grade four and a letter from group A from group B or group E. Well, here to tell us more is Professor Therese Lapere, Associate Professor in the Department for Translational Research in Immunology and Inflammation at the University of Antwerp. Thank you so much for joining me. Let's start right at the beginning, if we can. Let's talk about the gold system. I mentioned spirometry. It's vital, isn't it, in terms of assessing the patient? Yes, it's very important. Uh, spirometry is a quite simple tool to measure a patient's lung function or lung capacity. Um, and uh, it's very important, first of all, to diagnose COPD. So in order to establish whether a patient has COPD or not, uh, of course, it's important to have a clinical presentation, symptoms uh, that might be compatible with COPD, but to diagnose it, we need spirometry to establish a fixed airflow limitation. That means the patient uh, has a reduced expiratory airflow limitation um, and is, that is not reversible. That, so that's how we diagnose COPD. And so you talk about there the FEV1. So just talk us through those. There are four stages and the numbers that are associated with each stage. Yeah. So this is the classic um, yeah, gold grading of COPD based on lung function indeed and on the forced expiratory volume in one second. Uh, so there's indeed four stages where stage one is those patients who only have a mild airflow limitation. So they have an FEV1 volume in one second, they can expire, which is above 80% of the predicted value. Or as patients who have a COPD goal two, have a bit more severe airflow limitation, they are between 80 and 50% predicted. Goal three, between 50 and 30% predicted and patients with gold four, so the very severe ones, have an FEV1 below 30% predicted. And you mentioned their flare-ups and exacerbations. How do you classify the risk of those? Yeah, so flare-ups are basically uh, um, worsening of symptoms of, of COPD. So patients who experience more dyspnea, more cough, more phlegm uh, during certain periods, uh, that's called a flare-up. And mainly if a patient needs additional medication uh, during those periods, uh, that will also tell us uh, how severe the flare-ups are. So as a clinician, what do you believe are the strengths of this gold classification? Yeah, so the classification, uh, I already mentioned the classification in terms of lung function impairment, but there's also an additional combined assessment tool, uh, which does not include the lung function impairment, but it does include the flare-ups, the exacerbation, and also the severity of the symptoms. We can also uh, determine the degree of symptoms using very simple questionnaires, like the COPD assessment test, 
uh, where the patient uh, can report the degree of certain symptoms like dyspnea and uh, cough and phlegm, but also energy loss, uh, for instance, and uh, sleep quality. Uh, and that way we can identify patients who are at risk of future exacerbations and those that are symptomatic. And that will also guide the treatment, of course. So, as you mentioned, there are enormous strengths to the GOLD system. What are the weaknesses? What are the limitations of the system? Yeah, so I think the limitations are still that spirometry is underused uh, and you need spirometry to classify to the GOLD 1 to 4. Uh, especially in primary care, the uptake of spirometry is still too low. Uh, so that needs to be improved to classify patients. Uh, on the other hand, for the combined assessment tool, I think it helps us already a lot to phenotype better patients uh, as compared to in the past. But we probably can further improve this because COPD is a heterogeneous disease uh, and there are certain other factors that also have an impact on uh, future events such as comorbidities or maybe certain biomarkers that need to be involved in uh, a grading system. But I think uh, science is developing and we probably will improve this further in the future. So on that note, do you therefore think there is a need for a new or better classification of COPD patients? Yes, I, I, well, I think this is already very helpful um, and it needs to be well implemented. Uh, because it helps to guide treatment, especially the combined assessment tool. But COPD is uh, heterogeneous. We have certain phenotypes of the disease who will respond differently to treatment. Uh, we also have new treatments uh, coming along uh, which are targeting certain phenotypes. Uh, so I think we, we still need to further fine tune this assessment tool uh, to better characterize patients uh, and also for prognostic uh, value. Fantastic stuff. Thank you so much for your time, Professor Lapere. You're welcome. Thank you. So that's the gold staging system, but there is a new kit on the block, and that is the STAR classification system, or staging airflow obstruction by ratio, which was developed about a year ago with lots of vibes about it in the respiratory field. Well, here to tell us more is Dr. Xander Bertels, who sits on Euphoria's patient advisory board and is Euphoria's advocacy manager, and is the first author of one of the studies assessing this novel system in a real world population. Really good uh, to talk to you. Tell us about the STAR system. Uh, thank you, David. And uh, first of all, thanks for having me. It's a pleasure to be here. Uh, and you got it right. So STAR stands for staging of airflow obstruction by ratio. And it's a new and quite simpler classification rule uh, for the severity of airflow obstruction. Uh, and that is important to establish because we want to have accurate markers of disease progression in COPD, um, not only for good management, but also for correct uh, prognosis towards our patients. Um, and indeed, the, so the first study by Professor Butts and, and colleagues in actually in response to the GOLD system uh, showed that STAR could potentially be more accurate in uh, predicting mortality in COPD patients. So, so why is it? Why can it be more accurate? Because we talked about the gold system, we talked about spirometry and symptoms and the risk of exacerbations. Why should this be better? Well, first of all, it is actually designed to measure obstruction more specifically. So it uses, uh, in spirometry, you get a lot of parameters. Uh, and in the STAR system, you use a, a typical a parameter, the Tiffano index. Uh, which is based on the efficiency of lung emptying, as well as uh, the full lung capacity uh, or the false lung capacity. And that addresses some of the limitations of, of the gold system, uh, not only that it does not rely on uh, reference equations, but also that it's more uh, accurate, let's say, in COPD patients who have, for example, a restrictive comorbidity. In general, I think spirometry is the single best point of care instrument uh, for an assessment in, in for COPD as well as for the prognosis. Uh, so I think it deserves the best classification system, whether that being uh, a gold or star, that remains to be seen. What's the response been like in the respiratory community? I hear it's been something, it's been rather contentious, shall we say. No, that's true. Uh, so yeah, first of all, 
there are few research studies today, so scientists are not uh, on the level of a consensus right now, which is totally uh, understandable, of course. Uh, so there needs to be more research to have uh, to single out really the clear and uniform message that we uh, well should translate to to daily practice with uh, physicians. And but I, I do I do believe that Star can be the right tool uh, if you use it for the right goal and specifically. Uh, I think in, in in terms of unmet needs, that is a better and specific monitoring of disease progression. Uh, and I do like the fact that it's more simple, uh, especially if it addresses the problem potentially better. Okay, but there must be limitations. What are they? Yes, uh, there are certainly limitations. So because of the few studies, there haven't been a lot of validation studies uh, in, in several study populations. So what you like to do is to have a diverse set of populations in which you validate uh, this, this star system. Um, because, well, you want to know in what target population will we use this system. Is it more in the patients with chronic bronchitis? Or is it more in patients who have predominantly uh, emphysema? That remains to be seen. Uh, although I do can tell that in my PhD work, uh, and indeed in the, in the article that you mentioned, um, that we extended the validity uh, in, into non-smoking COPD. Uh, and that is an interesting because you have, of, of course, the COPD patients who stopped smoking, uh, but you also have COPD patients who never smoked. Uh, and that's a huge unmet need in COPD care in general. Uh, so, yeah, I think progressing in that area is, is really key. So clearly you're in favour of the STAR classification system. Do you think it will help patients in daily practice? Yeah, well, I think it can help uh, on the maybe short to middle term, uh, specifically because, well, in the COPD research area, we had a real paradigm shift uh, about our understanding of patients progressing to COPD. And currently there is established evidence that multiple trajectories of lung function can lead to that state of airflow obstruction. So I'm really interested into seeing whether uh, specific trajectories with specific disease activity align better with those star progression as comparison to the uh, gold progression, let's say. And that, that fits really in, in the, the message of more personalized medicine. COPD is a very uh, complex and heterogene heterogeneous group of, of patients. So, yeah, we need tools uh, to really make the right management decisions, uh, make a, a good prognosis. And, and I think STAR can, on the short to middle term, contribute to this. Well, thank you so much for explaining that so succinctly. And congratulations on the paper as well. That's Dr. Zander Bertels there. Thank you very much. Well, absolutely fascinating stuff. Many thanks to my guests, to Professor Lapere and also to Dr. Zander Bertals. Now, you can find more information about Euphoria on the euphoria.eu website, where you can also sign up to receive the latest news via email. Also, don't forget to follow us on social media on YouTube, X, LinkedIn, Spotify, Instagram and Facebook. Yes, we are on everything. Until next time, goodbye.